meeting of the Public Accounts Committee uh, here in the Senate Chamber at the Northern Ireland Assembly. Can I just remind members, mobile phones must be set to airplane mode or turned off. It is not sufficient to put mobiles on silent mode as they continue to interfere with Assembly recording. The session is being recorded in video and audio and can be accessed live via online streaming either on the Assembly website or Democracy Live. Uh, agenda item one is apologies. Have we any apologies this afternoon? No. Agenda item two then. The minutes of the meeting of the 29th of April 2021, pages 6 to 15 of your pack. Members, uh, are you content that I sign these being accurate? Okay. Agreed. Agreed. Okay, thank you. Okay, members, um, any issues or matters arising from the minutes? Good. Um, agenda item three then. Um, declaration of members' interest. Any member, any. Um, Declaration of interest they wish to declare this afternoon. No, nope. thank you. Agenda five then is correspondence, pages 19 to 24 of your pack. Um, we're joined by Mr. Kieran Donnelly, CB, the Comptroller and Auditor General of the Northern Ireland Audit Office, Colette Kane, Director, and Kyle Bingham, Assembly Support Officer, as well. So I wish you all a very uh, warm afternoon. And the members are referred to for their correspondence dated the 27th of April. 2021, pages 19 to 22 of your pack from Trevor McKee regarding the decision of the Charity Tribunal for Northern Ireland agreeing to a hearing on this matter. Mr McKee has also copied this correspondence to Northern Ireland Audit Office Committee and Committee for Communities. Are members content to note? Agreed. 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 Thank you. Um, members, following on from Mr McKee's previous correspondence regarding the Charity Tribunal in your pack, pages 23 and 24, Dated the 30th of April 2021, there is a letter from Nicole Lapping, uh, Chief Charity Commissioner, CCNI, clarifying the Commission's position on this matter. Do any members have any comments? Mr. Donnelly, have you any comments? Chair. Sir, yes. Uh, uh, being Chair of Nice Clinton Jericho, which is also a registered charity, I probably should declare an interest. Right, OK. Do you, you get a note of that? <clears throat> Okay. Um, sorry, Mr. Donnelly, anything you want to say around that? Uh, I want to say that no, there are some interesting <coughs> points raised by Mr. McKee in terms of the wider implication of the original court ruling. Um, and I suppose his main point is that um, it has implications for lots of other cases. And uh, would it not be sensible then for the Commission to? stand down those rulings rather than fight more legal challenges. So uh, I, I don't have a view on the rights and wrongs of that. That's just the, the, mm. the, okay. the, the line he's advancing. Members content, content to note? Agreed. Mm -hmm. okay, members, I refer to correspondence dated the 4th of May 2021 in your table pack, page 7, from Mike Brennan, the Accounting Officer and Permanent Secretary of the Department of the Economy regarding administration costs of COVID disruption payment scheme. <coughs> Mr. Brennan has outlined the 10% allocated to cover any transaction fees incurred per, statement, sorry, per student in administering the COVID disruption payment is a nominal cost. The department has uh, the right to claim back from the universities uh, whatever element of those notional administration costs is appropriate once an assessment of the actual costs of each university has been carried out based on the audited information. Are members content to note? Yeah. Read. Ten. Okay. Read. Okay, members, we will remain in open session to consider uh, ministerial direction. Uh, and agenda item six then is ministerial directions, pages eight to ninety-nine of your pack. <coughs> Mr. Cairn Donnelly, the Auditor General, Ms. Clett Cain, and Mr. Bingham will remain with us for the meeting. Members, we have three ministerial directions to consider today, <laughs> of which two are historical. Uh, that is, the schemes are now closed. I believe that the Controller and Auditor General is looking into the reasons why there have been a delay in a number of ministerial directions coming to the Committee from the Department of the Economy. Uh, Mr Donnelly, at this stage, anything you want to add to that? Any comment to make? Uh, yeah, two, two of those today um, go back to, I suppose, late last year. Um, in one of the cases, the Department uh, thinks they did send us it. Uh, we have no record. In the other case, uh, no, the, 
they acknowledged that there was nothing sent. That's the wet pubs case. Okay. Think, yeah. Uh, and the other was a COVID extension. Uh, so we're looking into all of that to see what, what we can learn from it. Okay. Members, I su suggest that, um, with your permission and agreement, we ask Mike Brennan to the committee to answer these questions regarding the delay in forwarding um, ministerial directions and also will give us the opportunity to ask on further questions in the uh, inquiry generating electricity and renewable energy following our last evidence session. And I also think it would be timely to ask him um, some questions around the current position vis-a-vis -vis the York Street campus of the Ulster University, which we'd agreed to do anyway. So would members agree that we'd, we'd kill three birds with one stone, as, as it were, there? Is that metaphorically, of course? Mm -hmm. Is that everyone agreed? Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> um, members, I also have a response from the audit office regarding a query last week raised by Mr. O'Toole on the Department of Finance ministerial direction and additional financial assistance scheme to make use of the remaining 2020-21 COVID-19 funding. Mr. O'Toole inquired if the 107. 77.9 million expenditure relating to three schemes covered by this direction was uh, the highest amount covered by a single COVID related ministerial direction to date. Um, I think, Mr. Bingham, uh, you have a response to that, is that right? Uh, yes, Chair, thank you. Um, we've checked our records and I can confirm that the direction had the ha second highest cover of all the COVID related ministerial directions that uh, we've been notified to date. So the first COVID-related ministerial direction from DFE was the 10K Business Support Grant Scheme. Yeah. Um, and that provided the largest amount to cover. Um, that was 294 million. Okay. Um, Is that okay, okay. Uh, Mr. O'Toole, you can test okay, that? Thank you. Yeah. Yes, Sam, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, any other members, any comment you want to make on that or content? Content. Uh, okay, we'll now go into the detail of the ministerial directions. Um, one ministerial direction, the uh, recognition payment for the supporting people and homelessness sector frontline staff. Members, I refer to correspondence dated 26th of April, at pages 26 to 27 of your pack from Mr Donnelly regarding ministerial direction. Recognition payment for supporting people and homelessness sector frontline staff. Um, the DFC Permanent Secretary wrote to the CNAG on the 15th of April 2021 to advise that she had sought a ministerial direction uh, from the DFC Minister Deidre Harge, MLA, on the 30th of March 2021 to put in place arrangements to make one of £500 payments uh, to uh, support people and homelessness sector staff in recognition of their work that they did during 2020-2021. Um, it is estimated that there will be 4,000 payments at £500 made to supporting people and homelessness staff at an estimated cost of £2.5 million, which is to be funded from the COVID funds already allocated to the Department for 2020-21. The Supporting People brackets, SP programme uh, provides housing support for approximately 19,000 vulnerable individuals to support them in living independently. Vulnerable individuals who receive housing support services include homeless people, older people, young people and people with physical disabilities, learning disabilities and mental health issues. Members, I refer to page 32 of your pack where you can find more details regarding the payment. The ministerial direction is comparable to the decision already made by the Health Minister to provide one-off recognition payment of £500 to the health and social care workforce. Um, the reason for the uh, ministerial directive is that while the Permanent Secretary had indicated there was a political support for this pro project. It does not uh, represent value for money as required by MPMNI. Uh, Steps taken, the Permanent Secretary wrote to um, the DFE Minister on the 30th of March uh, 2020, um, at pages 28 and 29 of your pack, seeking a direction from the scheme. So, sorry, that may have been may, may be a typo. It may have been the 30th of March 2021 there. Uh, pages 28 29 of your pack seeking direction of the scheme and the minister subsequently wrote to 
The Minister of Finance, page 31 of your pack, this was the appropriate route <coughs> as the executive approval was not considered as the scheme was not thought to be cross-cutting nor have any wider repercussive risks. Uh, the Minister approved uh, the uh, finance approved the 30th of March 2021, page 30 of your pack, and it was issued on ministerial direction on the permanent secretary on the same day. The relevant papers are uh, referenced above and underpin the decision of the cost of the MD of £2.5 million. Um, members, the CNAG will keep this matter in view uh, as the audit of the 2020-21 financial statement progresses. Mr Donnelly, have you any comment you want to make? I think you've said it all, Chair. Uh, that one is relatively straightforward, so nothing yeah. really okay. hmm. Any members, any comments, and you can content to note? Content. content. Thank you. Ministerial Directive then two is COVID Restrictions Business Support Scheme, brackets CRB SS, close brackets, pages 9 to 64 of your table pack. I have received correspondence uh, dated the 4th of May 2021, pages 9 to 11 of your pack from Mr Donnelly regarding ministerial direction from the DFE Minister Diane Dodds, MLA, on the 20th of October 2020 to implement a scheme to provide support to local businesses and address the gaps in the DOF uh, Local Restriction Support Scheme, brackets LRSS. Background on the 14th of October 2020, the Executive agreed a range of significant time-bound interventions to curb the spread of COVID-19 in Northern Ireland. The measures came into effect on the 16th of October for a period of four weeks. The Executive subsequently agreed to expand the Department of Finance-led localised restrictions support scheme to all of Northern Ireland. Under uh, LRSS, which is now closed, financial support was provided to certain businesses which had been uh, required to close or severely limit operations at their premises under the health protection regulations that were in place by the Northern Ireland Executive, subject to some exclusions. However, the scheme did not provide help to businesses that were found to <coughs> close but um, do not pay business rates. For example, hairdressers renting a, chain, a chair in a salon, and driving instructors and mobile beauticians. The LRSS scheme also provided financial support to businesses forced to close or severely limit their operations as a result of the increased health protection regulations uh, who were not eligible for the LRSS. The scheme operated in two parts. Part A, businesses that are named in health protection regulations but are not eligible for the LRSS and Part B, businesses that are not named in the health protection regulations but which applies good, uh, goods or services to such a, uh, businesses or reliant upon such a business being open and fully operational in order to trade. The scheme provides a grant of up to £800 per week for eligible businesses on the provision of specific information and assurances. The Department of the Economy has indicated that this scheme will fit within the funding envelope being uh, centrally to provide financial support for businesses impacted by COVID and should not exceed £40 million. Members, the absence of the evidence on which to base the value for money uh, assessment coupled with the level of risk attached to the delivery proposal meant that the Permanent Secretary could not provide the necessary assurances that the delivery of the scheme represented value for money as required by Department of Finance Managing Public Money, NI brackets MPMNI guidance. Members, I refer to the relevant papers underpinning these decisions at pages 12 to 64 of your pack. Um, the, the Comptroller and Auditor General states that the Department <coughs> provided an email indicating that they had sent the notification to him on the 4th of November 2020, but the CNAG does not have a record of receiving this email, which is now currently being investigated. The CNAG will keep this matter in view as the audit of the 2020-21 financial uh, statements progresses. Mr Donnelly, have you anything you want to add to that? Uh, not a lot. Uh, I think there's, a, there's an indication that there's a ceiling on this, about £40 million. Pounds. This scheme was to plug gaps in the earlier schemes, uh, particularly for those businesses who weren't paying rates. And also then other businesses, I suppose, that were more indirectly affected by COVID because they were in a supply chain to businesses that were affected. So uh, it's plugging gaps. Uh, all I can say is uh, we'll have to drill into this in great detail then when we're doing the, okay. the audit uh, this year. So. Okay, thank you. Any members, any comments? Content to note? 
Thank you. <laughs> Three, then, Ministerial Direction, Wet Pubs Business Support Scheme at pages 65 to 97 of your table pack. Uh, I have received correspondence 4 May 2021, pages 65 to 67 of your table pack from Mr Donnelly regarding a ministerial direction of Wet Pubs Business Support Scheme. The Permanent Secretary, Mr Mike Brennan, wrote to the CNAG on the 20th, 20th of April 2021 to advise he had sought a ministerial direction from the Department of the Economy Minister Diane Dodds, MLA, on the 11th of December 2020 to implement a Wet Pubs Business Support Scheme. Brackets. WPBSS. Close brackets. On the 23rd of November 2020, £10.6 million was allocated to the executive to support wet pubs, i.e. public houses which sell drink only, in recognition of the significant hardship they had experienced due to the impact of restrictions of trading since March last year. Whilst most hospitality businesses were open uh, on the 4th of July after the spring early uh, summer lockdown, drink only pubs were required to remain closed until the 23rd of September, <coughs> some 12 weeks later. Uh, members, the absence of evidence on which to base the value for money assessments, coupled with the level of risk attached to the delivery of a proposal, meant that the permanent secretary could not pro provide the necessary assurances that the delivery of the scheme represented value for money required by MPMNI. Members, the Comptroller and Auditor General noted in the delay of the Department communicating the details to him, and hence the delay in his correspondence to the Committee. The CNAG is currently in discussion on what caused the delay with the Department, and expect them to provide an update and confirm what actions they have taken to ensure this will not happen again. Members, I refer to the relevant papers underpinning these decisions at pages 65 through to 98 of your pack. Uh, the CNAG will keep this matter in his view, uh, view and the audit in the 2020-2021 financial statement progresses. Mr Donnelly, have you any comments to make on this one? Uh, this one's a bit more complicated, <coughs> because actually defining what because some pubs were open for you know, food and whatever, so drawing lines is, is going to be quite, quite difficult. Uh, but um, so we'll look at that one in detail as well during the audit. Okay. Any members? Any comments? You content to note? Agreed. Can I just check? Can I, I just want to check from my chair um, what um, uh, the CNAG just said about um, the potential for um, it being difficult to draw the line, given that presumably is what you're tr going to find out or ask um, whether there were certain pubs that had been categorized as wet pubs but that were open for a period serving so I, i'm aware of some you know some pubs that were wet pubs but they started doing food in some form or other when they were allowed to open if they were serving food Do, uh, are you going to find out if, if some of them also claimed from the wet pub scheme or is that a question you're going to ask uh, well, I suppose we'll ask the department that question. What yeah. sort of what I mean, how yeah. how they attempted to to control this? Yeah, uh, it is quite difficult, I think, to draw boundaries here, and um, so that that's one of probably one of the reasons there's a direct a direction was sought in the first place. Okay, okay, members, okay. content. <coughs> Great, thank you, um, members. Then, with your permission, we'll go into closed session for consideration of our report. Inquiry into Drive and Vehicle Agency, 2019-2020. Um, broadcasting, can I ask you to please bring in Ms Suzanne Murphy, Auditor, and Ms Caroline Laird, Auditor. Ms Murphy and Ms Laird. Uh, Mr Bingham, can you all see and hear us okay? Fine. Yes, thank you. Thank you all. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Senate Chamber Program.